All right, Junkie Nation. We're joined by Lorenz Larkin, good friend of the show, longtime friend of the show. He's got a fight coming up against Andre Korshkov in an upcoming show where Bellator and Ryzen will get together, put on a show in Japan. You got to be pretty stoked about that, right? That's one of the uh, birthplaces of the different martial arts that encompass mixed martial arts. Yeah, man. I'm uh like I said the first time I, I went out to Japan. Um for me, like fighting in the Madison Square Garden was like like to be totally honest with you, it was it was it was it was uh it was okay. You know what I mean? Like it was I think I appreciated more because you know I, I've watched boxing growing up and I know big fights has happened there, but other than that, it didn't really hit home with me. But when I got to fight at the Saitama, you know, that's when I was like Woo, you know what I mean? Because I've 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 watched so many great fights, and and to me, the biggest fights in you know mixed martial arts history, you know, that's happened at the Saitama. So that was like my Madison Square Garden, like my point in my career. I was like, yeah, are you guys uh, explicit? Are you guys can you get a cuss on here? Or, um, yeah, you can curse. Oh, okay. So that was like my what the fuck moment, like in my career, like guy, like you're in Japan fighting at the Saitama, mm -hmm. you know. So um, just in being able to go back, like I love Japan, like it's the I love the culture, I love the people. They're fucking super respectful. Uh, it's 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 very clean there, you know. It's just it, it's it's welcoming and 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 everybody like older people I've met that are like, you know, grandmas, gra like that type of, you know, age group. It's like, they all respect fighting. They all know what it is and they all really respect fighters. You know what I mean? Other than out here, you know, they, you know, you talk to some people and they think you're doing WWE and, and, you know, they don't really have the total grasp of it, but out there, it's just like the culture of fighting. It's like, sacred i don't know i can't describe it unless you're there you know mm -hmm. yeah well goes and i got to go to tokyo japan and call a fight once so oh, we know shit. what you're talking about um yeah it very knowledgeable fans there and they're fans of every single fighter that appears on the card i, I always thought that yes. was pretty cool you know here in the united states i would say that we also have cool fans but yeah there's some orangutans out there that they just want to guzzle beer and boo and yeah. you know what I mean? And then, and then I mean, it's cool, <laughs> you know, to like all, all, all power to them, you know, but it's yeah. just uh, out there. Just everything is just super respectful, you know, yeah. like everything, like all the way down the line from getting their pictures took in with you, just everything. Like if you do, they don't make unnecessary noises. And I mean, it doesn't bother me in the, in, however it goes but you know just to witness like you do something good they clap and then they mm -hmm. stop and then it's just like you know it, they're just it, it's it's i think everybody should experience going to japan at least one time in their life yeah um lorenz let me ask you a question here um you have fought you know for a long time and you're still good at it but Within the last year, three guys that I can think of, and there might even be more, that you fought have either, yeah, have, have already retired. Most recently, Robbie Lawler, Jorge Mazadal about three months ago, and then Paul Daly going back about, what, a year, six months, nine months, something like that. So I just wanted to check in with you in that regard. You know, no one's showing you the door. You're still competing at a high level. You're winning your fights. So yeah. um, I... You know, how, how, what, what, what's your status? What keeps you motivated still to go out there um, other than obviously fighting in front of respectful fans like the Japanese fans? Uh, the money. <laughs> no, uh, you know, my thing is with that is if you if you really look back at my career, you know, like I I think my style just helps me out a lot and it, and it and it doesn't allow me to take that much damage you know uh i mean if you re if you guys really think about it how many times have you really seen me like cut up and and bloody and and and, and black eyes and swollen eyes shut you know in a fight 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I'm just saying like the, my fighting style allows me to be more evasive and, 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 and not take as much damage as some of my peers, you know? So, I mean, as long, my thing is, as long as I don't feel like I'm two clicks behind these younger guys, then, you know, it, it's all, it's still all fun for me, you know, and I still love testing myself, you know, especially against the younger guys. Cause now I'm just like, you know, what's up motherfucker. Like, let's see, <laughs> let's see, you know, like, like if you think that I'm some fucking old horse, you know, in the fucking stable, like, please let me show you. So, you know, I, I'm just blessed enough to have a style that, that doesn't take damage like that. So you know, as long as I still feel good, shit, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I'll i tell you this, though. When the time is there, I, I have no problem just walking away because I just don't want to be one of those guys that, you know, luckily, uh, Lawler, you know, like, fuck, man, like, it. he did it the perfect way. He did it the perfect way. And a lot of guys don't do it like that you know what i mean they they go in they they keep trying to get that one more win and and they lose and then they lose and then they lose and then and this type of and mma in general man it's just it's a it's a shitty shitty thought process behind it because you 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 lost three times and and the end of your career and, and people were just like ah like he's he's done he's fucking done you know what i mean and they don't look at all the fucking work you put in before that. It's just kind of, that's the tail end of your career. So, you know, if you are able to go out with a win, fucking take it and get the fuck out of the casino. You know? <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, I was gonna, so here's another thing too. So I, I scrolled right to see, cause obviously I know you fought King Mo and the, there was a few others, but I was trying to stick with the welterweights mostly cause that was what you've been most of your life but i was scrolling to see if there was any other fighters that you know joined that group but that group is daily masvidal and lawler we're all within the last year so that's why i kind of lumped them together but in mm-hmm. scrolling did i see that right you a welterweight once fought walt harris who competes yeah. for the ufc as a heavyweight as an amateur yeah yeah we fought in uh uh kentucky amateur Wow, this was like open weight, or or were you just a bigger fella no, back then? I was I was heavyweight in uh, amateur when I when I see I MMA well amateur MMA well, didn't develop yet in California, and that was stuck at this kind of crossroads to where do I go to Vegas or do I go to fucking somewhere else and and fight X amount of fights and and then come back and turn pro. Cause I didn't want to do smokers, you know, I wanted to be like legit. And re- if I was really going to go at this, like go at it the right way. Yeah. And, um, and I think Las Vegas just turned, they just start having amateur sanctioned amateur fights. And then I just said, fucking, I went to Kentucky and I told myself, you know, I- I'm gonna fight 10 fights in a year and I'm going to fucking move back and I'm gonna turn pro and, it's a crazy story, but I, I fought 10, 10 times in a year and, an and that, yeah, as an amateur and then okay. came back, turned pro and went to 205 and went from there. What do you remember about the fight? It just says that you won, but did you guys throw down or were you guys both kind of like newbies back then? What, what was it ugly or was it nice? No, nah, I mean, it was, it, <laughs> I love Wal Harris. Wal Harris is, is a dope dude. So back then though, I, I it was a it was a it was a knockout. I oh, okay. wanted a knockout. Yeah. All right. Yeah, no, this wasn't a setup question or nothing like that. So even yeah, if it no. gets to him, Walt, I asked the question. He just answered it. Um but yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that means heavyweight, light heavyweight, middleweight, welterweight. Like you've kind of done a lot, you know, in these past what is it like 15 years now you're going on as a professional, something like that? Yeah, I I think so. I try not to even fucking think about it because <laughs> it's kind of right. funny. Well, hey, I, remember, I like man, you, you, you've kind of schooled us a little bit. I'm not asking about title shots or none of that. I'm trying to ask a new <laughs> series of questions. So hey, you got to help help a Latino I, brother out here. I I appreciate it. It's like a, a breath of fresh air. You're not asking me how camp is going. 
because I'm going to give you the generic answer. I'm like, dude, it's going great, you know, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. You know. No call no. outs. We haven't done any of that. No call outs. No, it's no, good. Yeah. It's good. It's refreshing, man. All right. No, Goes, but. Um, for, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. All right. Goes, what do you have for Lorenz Larkin? <laughs> I was just going to ask you what you feel like in this particular run, what is it that's really clicked for you or what has changed that has, I mean, you seem so relaxed, not just in the cage, but outside of the cage too. Um, I don't I, I just, I, I just really think that I just stopped giving a fuck about everything. You, you know, I like the good thing is I don't, like even if something is bothering me out out there when I fight or when I train, it shits out out of my head. You know what I mean? I don't even think about it. But I I just think for the most part, I just stop worrying about every fucking thing else with that comes with fighting, you know, uh, all the you know, just all, all all the other shit that comes with, you know, when you're gonna fight this guy, blah 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 da, da, da. and I'm just like more so on the aspect of just just keep me busy guys that's all that's all i want just keep me busy like you guys give me names i fucking accept them just just keep me busy i'm not even worried about all the other bullshit just keep me fighting because with me like when i'm stagnant that's the shit that's like it's 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 stupid for me i i i i either get big which you know i'm pretty sure there's no fucking secret now like i get big so and it's because you know if 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 there's no fight on the table like i don't fucking just train 24 7 like i don't beat up my body like that you know i'm doing other shit i'm fucking off-roading or shooting or fucking doing other shit you know so for me you know to keep me excited i just like keep me busy i never bitch and complain about opponents I just keep me busy. So, so far, you know, I, I've had one fight in February. We'll, we'll, and then I got this fight now. So we'll see if, if that comes true or not. But for the past, I don't know how long it's been like two fights a year. So, mm-hmm. uh, I got a feeling you'll get your third one. I, I, I like the place oh. so far. I think you'll get your third one. I wanted to ask you about Korshkov. So, George kind of brought it up. Like, if we go up and down your list, your hit list, you've seen everything. Wrestlers, BJJ guys, strikers. Yeah, yeah. It's all. So when you get that name in front of you, well, what percentage of like training camp is towards you? And then what percentage is towards him? Because I feel like though maybe those video sessions aren't as long anymore because you, you've just kind of seen it all, man. Yeah. my the, the main thing is with me with training is, is getting me – it like tip top you know what i mean it, as long as my con- you know my my conditioning program and and my timing is on you know i, I I've, I've seen a lot i react better when i adjust in the fight you know i don't i i a long time ago i used to watch my guys and watch them and watch them and and for me, it just, it throws me off. You know what I mean? I think I'm a b- much better fighter when I just react. When I, when I in the in the fight in in the in the you know the realm of the fight, and I'm reacting to what he's going off of, and I'm adjusting. So I mean, we fought before, you know. So it's like, it's, I I don't believe there's nothing that's really gonna throw me off. You know, I mean, other than what he adds in more wrestling than last time, or he adds a different type of spin kick but other than that you know like i'm not i'm not too focused on him so you know uh per se i'm just like as long as i'm dialed in that's that's the main thing i'm gonna put myself on the big screen because i want to show you something back there is a world mma award and i have a feeling you might be up for one this year Your knockout was incredible. (laughs) And we were talking off air a little bit. It kind of like the thud noise that you made off of that, man, was nasty. But it happened earlier in the year, right? And sometimes uh, in MMA, we we tend to look at what just happened. But what do you think your chances are, man? And where does that one stand out in your career? 
that KO? I mean, I've I've seen some I've seen some KOs, but you know, like with that one, with what I've seen, you know, it's just how his body reacted to it. I think that you know adds extra to it. So you know, I think it's up there, man. Like I I haven't, I haven't I'm not I'm not trying to be biased, you know, obviously because it's me, but uh, I haven't seen nothing that's like with that i've seen some knockouts some good knockouts but i haven't seen nothing that's like somebody get hit and their body is just like just face plant you know face plant straight dead on the floor so you know and, and then with that uh how i kind of sum that up in my career as far as knockouts you know it was more so for the redemption part of, of it with the whole story behind it you know and um I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys seen when when the when the no contest happened in our previous fight, and you know, I was just so adamant about like this guy had nothing for me, and, you know, and and people just you know, I don't know what the fuck they're thinking, but they're just like you know, like oh, he had him down and da da da, but you know, I couldn't, you know, I I, I don't think I've ever been that adamant after a fight and 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 said like this guy had nothing for me. I felt all his power, you know, like he knew what was happening and, and I felt like he wanted a way out. So, you know, fast forward, we fight and, you know, for that outcome to happen, you know, it just, you know, and it was so good too. Cause they had me as a big ass underdog and I fucking went heavy on myself, you know, obviously. So it was, that was good. And the back end of that was good. So it was, it was a good night. We're going to close with three off-brand silly questions. You ready? Shoot. Question number one, has anyone ever come up to you and said, hey, are you De Deion Sanders? Ooh, Deion yeah, Sanders? Yeah. No. Deion, former NFL player. You kind of look like Yeah, no, no. I know Deion Sanders. No, I haven't got that. I've got some dumb shit, man. I, <laughs> I don't only, with I've got... only with the hat like that. Oh, with the hat? Yeah. Like, the like prime time? Hat. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm observing smiles more because I can't smile, and you have a really nice smile. But right now, I'm like, holy shit, he kind of looks like Deion Sanders. But no one's Deion ever said Sanders. that, huh? No, no, not not that I could think of. But I've had some dumb shit. <laughs> what, what's some dumb shit you've had? Uh, uh I don't want to say it because he's like, uh, he's like a, a fucking, I think a pedophile, right? But it was like arc. I had my when I had my braids. Some girl was like, "You look like R. Kelly." I was like, "Fuck, like R. Kelly." That is not a fucking like. That's not a compliment, but thank you. But yeah, okay. Yeah, the next that's... one is all these years you've rep Riverside loud and proud. I've always loved it. You know, we grew up in Southern California, so we know Riverside. We've been there. Great city. We have to go through Riverside to get to our parents. Yeah, further in the Inland Empire, Paris, California. Okay. I did want to ask you this. Are you pretty much the toughest mofo in Riverside, unofficially, in a way? Uh, let me think. As far as, you know, just all fighters? Yeah. Just everyone that lives in Riverside, are you the toughest guy in Riverside? Mm, I mean... I haven't lost in my city. <laughs> Un unofficially, I've never lost in my city, so I don't know. All right, we'll give it to you. Last question. You know, um, one day you're going to be probably a grandpa, right? And kid your grandkids are going to sit on your lap. You know, you're going to tell them all these stories about the unofficial wins in Riverside and then all these other great kills <laughs> yeah. like the last one you just had. And then uh -huh. the little kid is going to go, hey, did you ever sub anybody? And so you kind of can't really tell them about the time you subbed anyone. Is that something you'd like to do before the career ends? Not to say your KOs haven't been savage enough. We love them. But I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. have you ever thought to yourself, like, man, I want to I get a submission before all this is over? I've got a submission. You have? Amateur. Pro, I went, well, I'm in pro, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got one. It doesn't even count. It was like a fucking neck crank. That's like saying you got one. You got one in practice or something like that. You're not <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe one day. One day, man. Have you thought but about one, it like, or, or not really? I don't. I don't know. I don't even know if you guys would even want to deal. With you. Can you guys 
think about if I got a submission, like, come on, like, I fucking, I might just, this thing might just blow up, dude. <laughs> I think the world is better with me not having a submission because once in the once that I get a submission, dude, it's like nobody Major can't tell me Major. shit, dude. Give me my red belt. I don't want to talk to nobody. <laughs> you know, like what what belt are you in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Oh, I don't want to say that, man. I give up. No. no, I'm a brown belt. I'm a brown belt. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Well, like yeah. I'll give you an example. Here's two that just jump out at me. We thought John Jones. And Cyril gone. We're gonna strike, you know, the kickbox this whole time. And then next thing you know, John Jones, whoop, submits him, and that's it, you know. And then you along the field, huh? You I didn't you like it. That? I didn't like it, but I just thought, wow, he got out of having to get hit by Cyril mm. Gone, who's way bigger and hits a lot harder. He got out of that and won his title. Yeah. And then Alonzo Menafield, I thought he was gonna um I thought he was going to, like, sprawl, right? And next thing you know, he actually cranked that guillotine. I don't know if you saw it against Jimmy Crute this past weekend. And I thought, wow, good for him. And here, the whole time, I kept thinking maybe Lonzo Menafield might knock him out. And I know you're a proper, you're a proper knockout artist. But I was just wondering if if, if you ever can remember if there's ever been a close one, if you ever wanted one or what, just because, you know, again, like, you look at the outstanding record, that's just one thing that's, that sticks out to me. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. If something's, like, right there, I'm going to take it. You know, like, I think anybody, like, is, is whatever comes, you know, if, if something was in the beginning of the fight and it came right there, like, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna try to jump on it. You know, it's less damage. I got to take, you know, further out. But I don't know. Who who knows? Who knows? Are you going to get Maybe. mad when, when we say, what is he doing? He's a striker. <laughs> well you know like john like i was under the impression he was probably going to submit gone because it, i mean to me john jones has one of the highest iqs out there as far as fight iqs and uh why you know why 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 like i always look at fighting on percentages you know and you know yes you know uh um jones can keep his range and that type of stuff but you're still hiring the percentages of non getting something on you, you know, when you can take him down, nullify him, get the fight over with, if you can, you know, and walk out of there without a scratch on him. So, I mean, I was kind of impressed if, if he took him down, it was going to be over. All right. Um, by the way, one of those unofficial wins, was it ever at Castle Park? I always drive by there and I go, that looks like fun, but I wonder if, <laughs> If things can get hairy at night as well, no, not Castle Park, but we got we got a downtown. We used to, you know, back when I was younger days, there was a lot of uh, we used to have a thing called a uh, Wednesday night. It was like a Wednesday yeah. like market market night, you know, mm -hmm. like. But you know, everybody from all different parts would show up there. That was like a kick it spot, you know. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things happened. You know. We'll have to crush some beers, and you can tell us about it one day. Yeah. They're in the and the, the Alberto, so everybody from Riverside they know on the Albertos. So it was always downtown area and and the Albertos off of uh Arlington and uh Magnolia. They used to have a dirt, they used to have a parking lot and then a dirt parking lot next to it, and they both used to be packed. And it was like an after after house party spot. Everybody goes yeah. there and yeah, but you know, like Tank Abbott, he's he was the king of Huntington Beach. Jorge Masvidal was the 305 guy. I'm trying to give you Riverside, man. 909, you know, that's you, that's Lorenz Larkins. That he, that he, oh, 951. 951, huh? 951. 951. Well, 9909 was the old school, yeah. You're right, 951. That was you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, hey man, it's always a fun time with you, and uh, good luck with the rest of the camp, the flight down there, and 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 do Thank your you. thing. We always enjoy watching you fight. Yes, sir, man. Shout out Junkie Nation. Appreciate you guys, man. Thank you, Lorenz. And folks, don't forget to check out AJ McKee, Patricky Pitbull, Kyoji Kyo, uh, Horiaguchi. He'll be there as well. Danny Sabatello. They stacked the card over there for Bellator and Ryzen on Showtime on Saturday, September 29th. Thanks, Lorenz. Take care. All right. Take care, guys.